Shouldn't take too long. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at single player games you can easily sink hundreds of hours into. Everyone in this city lives in their own goddamn bubble. Hades. Once you go through one run, it's hard to put this down. Hades strikes an excellent balance of high stress and low relaxation within such short time frames. You can easily spend 30 to 40 minutes trying to escape the underworld and spend about half that speaking to characters, improving relationships, and setting things up for your next run. On top of that, none of your runs will feel the same as one before. Though boons may repeat, you're constantly having to make decisions to alter your route depending on certain rewards. Garner a new boon, grab a palm to beef up a boon you already have, or just try to nab some gold? You'll just have to work with what's given to you. Consider that a reimbursement for last time. Baldur's Gate 3. Lackin blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. To see everything that Baldur's Gate 3 has to offer means you would have to quit playing any other game for at least a year or two, and that's a generous estimate. This game is so massive with its different character interactions, romance options, side quests and such, that it took most of the gaming community a month to get through just the first act. But what else would you expect from a Dungeons & Dragons video game? Developer Larian Studios has said that it'll take the average player between 75 and 100 hours to finish a single playthrough. But again, if you want to experience as much as there is in Baldur's Gate 3, you might have to go for a second campaign, and maybe a fourth. <laughs> My, this place is fun. Elden Ring. While we're on the subject of games that require multiple playthroughs to see everything, Elden Ring typically takes the average player around 60 hours to finish. The thing is, that's assuming the average player A knows what they're doing from the get-go, and B knows exactly where to go for an optimal playthrough. Yeah, there's no way most of us are playing that way anyways, especially when farming is almost a requirement to get through certain areas. What we're trying to say is, don't be surprised if your playthrough exceeds those 60 hours and gets into the triple digits, especially if you're trying to see and do everything. Cyberpunk 2077 Back when I, Ty, reviewed Cyberpunk 2077, I had managed to see and do everything in the game in a total of 96 hours, playing as male V with Pan Am as my romance option. Those 96 hours also include going through each of the multiple endings. So imagine wanting to play the game as a completely different version of V, maybe one that's got more attitude or a deeper focus on cyberware, or perhaps play as a V with a different backstory, after all, you'll get a completely different backstory and meet Jackie in a different way, as well as unlock unique dialogue options in certain encounters, and that's including both main encounters and side missions. In other words, there is plenty of reason to go for another 90 to 100 hours. I'm still working on my second playthrough, man. Alright. Evelyn's a doll. Used to work at Clouds. Sig case on my table's got the address. Take it, and once you find Evelyn, give it to her. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Look, if you blasted through Tears of the Kingdom just for the main story, you're missing an entire second half to your game. Tears of the Kingdom is substantially bigger than its predecessor, Breath of the Wild, because of how much there is to do. More side quests, more shrines, more puzzles, more environments to explore and interact with, and that's just scratching the surface. Besides, if you're really desperate to just stay in this new iteration of Hyrule, then, uh, there are 1,000 Korok seeds to collect. Hey, you wanted to inflate your game time, there it is. This all aligns with what I've read during my studies. And then this, it shows the Demon King. Red Dead Redemption 2. What have you done with your foot? It appears to like this place. It wants to stay. 
You absolutely can play through Red Dead Redemption 2 like any normal video game. For some though, this is Cowboy Simulator 2018. It isn't enough to just sit through the main story when you can sit down for a game of poker, go hunting, or search for bounties. Or, if you're really that bored, you can try to live out your fantasy of being the most wanted outlaw in the wild, wild west. Everyone's got their own flavor of yeehaws and cow rope, and no matter which way you want to go about your cowboy-themed second life, it is more than possible to get carried away. There's no way that we're getting out that door. Take this and blow a hole through that wall. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. We've seen speedrunners exploit bugs to finish Skyrim in record time, but to finish even the main story is a next to impossible task. It is extremely easy to get distracted by some of their side quests, making its presence known, all because you took a small detour into some cave you stumbled upon. And then there's the eventual desire to just wipe out all of Whiterun for giggles and see how long you can go with the guards before your imminent capture and or death. Skyrim literally sucks you in long enough to where you completely forgot there is a main story. Or at least, there was a main story. Persona 5 Royal. Let's go! We could have chosen many other JRPGs, Dragon Quest, The Legend of Heroes, a personal favorite of mine, and Etrian Odyssey. They would have all been excellent choices. But Persona 5 Royal gets the spotlight for how much is added into an already meaty game. In addition to the massive story, you have a new phantom thief thrown into the plot, our darling Kasumi, a whole new area of the city to explore in your free time, and a brand new palace to bring down in the metaverse. Yeah, there's a lot more to go through here, and we're all for it, while we wait for Persona 6. Fallout New Vegas. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. There are several reasons why New Vegas would take you a monumental period of time to fully beat. Even though the main story is only about 30 hours long, we all know it's going to take the average player a lot longer as side quests get thrown in their way and companions start requesting favors for their own quests too. And then there's the flexibility in character builds through perks and skills affecting some decisions and dialogue options. Hell, the Wild Wasteland trait alone tacks on quite a number of quests for you to discover yourself. But you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. We publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt <laughs> Regardless if you have the base game or a version that comes with the expansions, The Witcher 3 is a long game. While the main story takes up roughly 50 hours of the game, the side quests more than double the amount of time needed to do everything there is to do. And if you're into card games, well, you just might lose all sense of time learning and trying to master Gwent. By the way, this is without the two expansions tied into the game. But you know, how many of us own the Game of the Year edition? Yeah, we got a near 200 hour game sitting in our libraries waiting to be fully completed. No need to apologize. It was nothing. Which game saw you lose track of time every session? Let us know down in the comments. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.